Hey guys, this is Captain Frugal reporting for duty, and today we're going to do another episode of comic book ads. And this time we're going to Supergirl issue number three, back to 1994 from a limited series. So we open up right off the bat with some pimple control. Oh yeah, pimple control. You need your Stridex to clean those faces. There's always kind of all kinds of ads like that, because this is the group they figured, the age group that was reading these comics. Early teenagers... To, you know, in that regard, that tend to have that issue. To be honest, I didn't have an issue with that. I have more acne as an adult, I think, than I ever did <laughs> as a teenager, which is sort of unfair. <laughs> oh, well. Talking up the living here. We're going to scroll through here. Okay, here we go. Vertigo Comics. DC's Vertigo Comics Sandman. This was a popular series, but this is for the trading cards. A new card line from Skybox. I never got into Sandman. Maybe you did, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Sandman's. I always hear good things. Matter of fact, what have you heard? Have you read it? Do you think I should? And on top of that, do you have any of the cards? I have never even thought about getting Sandman cards. It wasn't my thing, but if you did, let me know what your thoughts are. We then go back to another classic page of buying comic books and ordering particular issues here. You know, these were fantastic. You just, you just don't get these anymore. I, you know, I loved them. I, I wish these were still around. But hey, they're, they're not. Did you ever order any of these kinds of things? I did. I did when I when I ran a second-hand comic book shop, and a specialty comic book shop where I'd hunt down issues. I'd use all kinds of resources to find what I needed. Whatever it took to get those comics for my client. Now this next advertisement, I really like the artwork on this advertisement. Batman collected Legends of the Dark Knight. Three different interpretations of the Batman by three creative teams. Blades, we have Legends of the Dark Might in Hot House. Now, I can't say I've ever read this trade paperback, okay, but I like the cover. I, I like how this cape is sprawled out. I, I really enjoy it. Now, I'm not a big fan of Batmite, but hey, the cover on this, I mean, the art on this is just fantastic for this ad, not a cover. <laughs> what do you think? Of, I like this Batman style. The horns are a little bit long, capes extended out there really really cool i have a friend that draws batman fantastically i always wished he would become a batman artist for the comic book series but being a comic artist never really interested him but he draws a fantastic batman he drew he also did what called bat fud he took elmer fud and put batman in you know made him like batman it was hilarious absolutely excellent artist he uh he's done tattoo work things like that but he never really got into car, uh, comic book art as wanting to draw a comic book, which is a shame because his art was phenomenal. Still is. Absolutely. Here we have a Looney Tunes. You love the cartoons. All new monthly comic. Yeah, you know, I never got into many of those kind of comic books with the cartoony nature like this. But sometimes I did. Like old ones with Bugs Bunny, things like that. Uh, usually the real old ones, not the more current ones. So I've never read any of these particular ones. But if you have... I hope you enjoyed them. If you do have any of those, and if you read them, let me know. Were they any good? Because, you know, I'm always looking for things that maybe I can read with a little frugal or American Dream, my daughter there, and have fun with them and have a good read and not have to worry about a lot of crap that's in today's comic books. You know, they're just not quite the age of my daughter being only six and my son being nine, which I thought he was eight just <laughs> the other day. I Somebody asked how old he was, and I said eight, and my son's like, Dad, I'm nine. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry. You know, I can't keep track so it's just man it's scary he's gonna be 10 so soon but anyway share the love of kids stuff together moving on to another ad i said the artwork in this book is just serviceable nothing super spectacular all right here we have a new era begins here green lantern number 51 you've got the most powerful weapon in the universe what do you do first you give it to an artist <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm going to say right off the bat, I'm not a big Kyle Reiner fan. I know I'm going to get heat for that. I am a Hal Jordan fan, John Stewart, Guy Gardner. I love those. Him, he's okay. I'm not saying he's bad. But here's the thing. I hated what they did to Hal Jordan to get here. Because I know it was a push to move Hal Jordan aside. That wasn't the writer Ron Mars' fault. They wanted new blood into there. I get it. But the, I think he did Hal Jordan dirty. That's just not the way. It was so unheroic. And I'm not a big fan of Ron Mars' work. 
Some people do, some don't. I didn't care for him that much on his Silver Surfer. I love the art when he was on Silver Surfer with Ron Lim. Ron Lim's art on Silver Surfer was fantastic. But his storylines just never were that great. There were sometimes some that were good, just never quite great. And I, I'd say the same thing with his Kyle Reiner. They were okay. You know, I know pissed off Gail Simone, right, with women in refrigerators, which, okay, that makes it worth a little bit right there. <laughs> Gail Simone was also a writer that had a lot of potential. She's done some good work, like with, with Batwoman and Birds of Prey, but she never quite got there, and then she went downhill back. So I think that's what happens when you take ideology above storytelling. You start shoving that in first, and it causes a problem. It hits and takes its toll on the story. You need to focus on the story. You can have some of those other elements in it, but the focus needs to be on the story before you interject your own opinions. But otherwise, this is a pretty cool advertisement. Uh, you know, this was his early concept for his... Uh, actually, no, I think this was his second version of his suit. I can't remember if it was a little... Bit, yeah, it was a little different, I think, from this. And then they changed it to this. Now, here we go. Who needs Batman? We got Robin crashing through. Uh, you know, really great. Not Robin and the Huntress, who team up in a special weekly three-part saga. Awesome. You know, I liked Tim Drake Robin during this period. They've, DC has done Tim Drake dirty. People are going to go, oh, homo no, it has nothing to be homophobic or anything like that. But when you have a comic book series that's ran over 100 issues that never even hinted at him being gay or bisexual, and the only reason they made him bisexual is because that way, if they got too much backlash and it couldn't work out, they could always fold back and go in there and just ignore that ever happened. Let's be honest. It's because they don't have balls. So, Tim Drake was awesome. Amazing detective. The artwork was cool in this series. He was funny having him pair with the Huntress. It's just definitely a good mix of differences there. I loved Robin's miniseries as well. I loved his series uh, under Chuck Dixon. It was amazing. And as I said, now, they just he, he isn't the same Tim Drake. And once again, not because of sexual orientation. You look at how they downplay his smarts. They downplay his fighting skills. He wasn't the best fighting Robin, I'll give you that, or the most acrobatic, but he could hold his own. And he was incredibly smart and a great detective. And they just don't spotlight that enough because they're too busy spotlighting his somewhat boyfriend. So, go figure. It is what it is. Once again, they're pushing agendas over story. If, if it was just a part of the story that didn't take the forefront, it'd probably be fine. Here we have the very, very quiet. The very, very quiet. <laughs> Tried my best there. Sorry for the bad humor there. But there we have good old Umber Flood. Tired of hunting for your favorite comic? A subscription to Looney Tunes means the search is over. Subscribe now. So you can subscribe to Looney Tunes Comics. Never did. I've never subscribed to Looney Tunes Comics. This one I'd pick up once in a while to read something funny, as I said uh, previously. It was never in the forefront of my comic reading. Uh, I liked Archie Digest, though. Those big digests. Those are more comical that I'd read. Here we have DC Universe. What is TV like in the DC Universe? That's the question. If this monthly DC's comics were TV shows, one night on DC TV might look like this. And they'd give this info here. Uh, it's an interesting concept. But we do have DC on television. And we know what it's like, right? We know, sadly, what it's like. Some there's some good, and then there's some bad. Star Girl, for example, is one that I think everybody should give a chance. Star Girl is a fantastic series, absolutely wonderful. Probably the best CW show out there. Followed next by probably Superman. Unfortunately, they cram once again a lot of identity politics, gender crap in there that doesn't need to be because they think that's what people want. Good stories. The other characters we could have, but right now if you flipped on, oh man, I'm going to sound so bad. If you flipped on CW shows, you'd think that half the population or higher is, is gay. And it's not. It's not even near that. Once again, there's nothing wrong having gay characters, but, and I'm not even trying to use a measuring stick, but they try to say, well, we're trying to be representative of all. Well, if that was the case, not everybody's gay. Use good gay characters. Absolutely. There's some great gay characters. There's nothing wrong with that. Once again, nothing wrong with that in those. But... Quit making their sexual identity the main part of the story. They should not... Gay people, their main part of their character is not that they're gay. I, I, you know, talk to anybody who's gay. The main part of what makes them who they are is not their sexual orientation, but that's the way these comic book people tend to act. And it's just not fair to those people. 
makes characters of character character caricatures. There we go. Can't get the word out of them instead of actual real people. Here we have. If you can't keep up, get out of the way. The Flash. This was a time when it was written by Mark Wade. Uh, you know. Uh, as much as people are down on Wade, and I am down on Wade, Wade is, yeah, putts, to be honest with you, he's wrote some great stories, okay? He's wrote some crap stories. His most recent run on Captain America was complete garbage, okay? It was not good at all. His current run that he's doing with World's Finest is yet to be seen. Um, I, I thought it was an interesting start of his story. It has an interesting direction, but it's not canon to anything in the universe of DC. It can't be is the way they've written it so i don't know what to take of that we'll see how that series goes but he's had some good uh people said some great things about some of his flash runs so uh one day i plan on rereading all the flash from the beginning all the way to the end i've just finished not too long ago reading the avengers from issue one all the way through the first volume and now i'm doing that with captain america starting from the tales of suspense and reading that all the way through uh, eventually i plan on hitting the flash and doing the same so i'll, I'll get a better idea of his work than on the flash and then once again we have more subscriptions to the characters uh, during this time period it's always funny uh they tried to reflect the time period so all the characters well not all a large portion of the characters had longer hair batman did <laughs> but like, superman had longer hair once again subscriptions fit you can get in this case 12 issue subscriptions for 18 or 21 dollars at this point man imagine that Whew. what do you get now five comic books if you're lucky yeah, five to 15, 20, yeah, like four or five comic books for that price. Ugh, terrible. Now here's another one too, Batman, Sega of, the, Sega of the Dark Knight trading cards. Once again, I wasn't really big in buying a lot of trading cards, but the artwork on this picture is phenomenal. I love this look of Batman. It just, I mean, it's not the most action-centric pose, but it, it, it doesn't make any sense. He's opening up his cape for, for no reason down below, so maybe he's flashing somebody. <laughs> Batman the Flasher. I am. Who are you? The Batman Flash. Or maybe she should call him I'm the Flash. And then open his. Okay, that's terrible. Shame on me. But otherwise, the artwork is pretty darn solid. I mean, I like how he's drawn there. Pretty darn cool. I, if you have any of those trading cards, let me know. I'm interested to see here. Oh, here we go. Jam it home, March 4th. NBA Jam. Now, I am not a basketball guy. I suck at basketball. Okay, I do like playing basketball games. Video games are fun. And I tell you, NBA Jam was amazing. I think anybody that knows basketball at all or likes basketball played NBA Jam. Even people that didn't, because it was just such a fun arcade-style basketball game. I, just phenomenal. I recommend everybody give NBA Jam a chance. I love that. I love Arch Rivals. I didn't like the arcade style of basketball games, but that's just me. Have you played it? Let me know. This is the Super Nintendo one, but it's also... Oh, and Genesis and Game Gear they're advertising here. My mistake. Um, I played this on Super Nintendo. That's the one I played it on. If you played it, what did you play it on? And there we have it, everybody. The advertisements for Supergirl issue number three back in 1994. Hope you enjoyed. If you did like, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you don't mind. You will find yourself in a position to help the channel and you want some special perks like perks like videos, special videos just for you that nobody else gets but subscribers to my Patreon or Subscribestar. You'll get those there as well as special messages, as well as music. I put music links there where you can download music that you can use as ringtones, just listen to if you want, or use them for your YouTube videos for background music. I, you don't have to worry about getting a copyright strike or anything. Uh, that's your my, my thanks to you providing all that. You don't ever have to worry about that. Well, thank you for watching. Until next time, keep it cool.